Hi, I'm Fred Schultz, and I'm running for president. I'm a write-in, so um, please tell the pollsters that you support me if you do, because otherwise we're not going to win. And uh, to be honest, if I'm down in the polls a few days before the election, I'm going to throw it to Hillary because Trump is just so much more scary than her. I mean, he's, um, he would you know, cause much more death and destruction and slavery and poverty and starvation, so war. But she's um, pretty bad, too. Um, let me explain to you. Let's talk for a minute about terrorism, please. As we all know, there was a horrible um, bombing the other day, uh, two days ago, in Chelsea neighborhood in New York City. Um, also, there was a stabbing in Minnesota, several, ten stabbings in Minnesota. Um, these were both people who came over here, moved here were, when they were young, were Muslims, and as they say, radicalized. They, 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 were, they, had, they had been um, fit into American society for most of their lives, and then within the last year or two, they, quote, radicalized, meaning they uh, decided that they were going to start killing people. Uh, now, first of all, you must understand that getting more into Islam does not mean you're going to start killing people. Most people who get more into any religion, including Islam, do not decide to start killing people. I mean, this is a, as we would call it, you know, radical fringe. Um, but I will say this. The best way to stop all this hate of America is for America to be more loving towards everyone in the world. That means, number one, we have a billion people starving, uh, most of them children, 22,000 children die a day of starvation. We have probably another billion who are homeless. Um, you know, most people, in, well, t about two billion in the world survive on under $2 a day. Um, you know, these are, in other words, the U.S. has a net, the people of the U.S., the U.S. has a net worth of approximately, it's hard to determine, but between 125 and $250 trillion, maybe more. The world has a value of, again, maybe uh, 250 to 500 trillion, maybe 1,000 trillion, a quadrillion. I mean, it's, it's maybe more, maybe a few quadrillion. It's hard to know. But the problem is, is that we tax uh, income instead of net worth. And I'll get to that later. But as far as my immigrant, I mean, my um, terrorism plan, let's talk terrorism for a minute. It's very simple. We have a wealthy nation. Number one, we got to spread love instead of hate. That means taxing the wealthiest 1% who own 45% of the assets in this nation, a small percentage of net worth, so that then we use that for economic development in our nation and worldwide, and for a guaranteed minimal income. You know, God forbid people can't get a job here, and even worldwide would be good, although we should, of course, get all the wealthy people in the world together on this. Um, as far as jobs, yes, my plan would, have, would create 50 million new jobs uh, for building infrastructure, blah, 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 inter free internet. Um, but the main thing, going to a green gas, green economy, but the main thing is, let's be honest about this, we have a lot of um, police in this nation and soldiers overseas, and we also have a lot of concerned citizens in this nation, so it's quite simple. Number one, our soldiers overseas are not helping this, are not helping. The more we attack people overseas in response to any attack, the more, number one, civilians we kill. I'm sure that 90% or more, probably 95% of the people we kill are civilians. Number two, when you kill civilians, then the people who, the other civilians get angry and many of them radicalize overseas and in this nation. Now, the FBI director, James Comey, the other day said that if we defeat ISIS, uh, we can expect that ISIS will spread out from there to the U first to Europe and maybe some to the U.S., likely some to the U.S. So, simple. I'm not saying we don't have to defy, well, yes, we don't have to be involved in defeating ISIS. First of all, their neighbors will probably defeat them. Iran is out to get them. Remember, Iran is tied in tight with the Iraqi government now. Remember, Iran, the Shia and the, and the Sunnis sought, fought a huge civil war for 10 years. Probably a million people died, maybe two million, we don't know. Uh, that was a stalemate. My point is now we have the Saudis going against um, this ISIS people who is just a spin-off of Al-Qaeda. Now we have, um, you know, um, all their neighbors 
fighting against them. I mean, whether we like it or not, they're pro- Russia, they're probably going to be crushed. Now, I, these are horrible people, but on the other hand, the people attacking them often um, have death squads and that kind of thing, like the Shia militias also have death squads that go around just killing people. Um, listen, throughout history, if U.S. people had traveled to that region, they either would have been forced to convert or uh, been killed. So this is nothing new. What is new is, look, obviously they can get into buses, into um, planes, and you know, kill a lot of people. Now that comes down to, in the end, how are we going to protect ourselves? Number one, we have to arm ourselves. That means everybody in the world has to arm themselves against maniacs. Now granted, of course, if somebody uses a bomb, you can't stop somebody uh, from planting a bomb with a gun or a knife or pepper spray, which I usually carry on me. But my point is, I really believe that everybody should at least have pepper spray on them. Wait, here, I have it on me now. Pepper spray. And um, probably a gun on them, you know? Um, Really, let's get real here. Now, um, and the US, you know, and governments around the world can facilitate fighting against terrorism by how? By arming people with guns, simple. I mean, yes, they can still use cars, just to mow down people, that's obvious. Um, And let's pray this doesn't happen, but let's get to the main point of this. Number one, as I said, arm people. Number two, we need to repurpose police from attacking us for unconstitutional, victimless, and consensual crimes like drug use, drug possession, even drug sales, as long as they're selling what they say they're selling, nobody should go to jail. Now, if they say they're selling you cocaine and they're selling you, um, you know, uh, Drano, yeah, I mean, that person should go to jail. But I mean, most people selling, you know, if they're selling you what they say that they're selling you and you want to buy that, nobody should go to jail. Somebody says that they're selling sex and you're buying sex, you know, that nobody should go to jail. That'll also prevent a lot of rapes and murders when we legalize sex work. Number three, gambling, of course. I mean, you know, who's to say that, oh, you can take this risk with your money in the stock market or with options in the stock market, you know, which would, which are many times, you know, options, you know, expi- can expire tomorrow. Same thing as a bet, but you can't do sports betting or um, other betting. I mean, that's ridiculous. Anyway, my point is we need to repurpose the police. And of course, we also obviously have many people getting shot and killed on the streets every day. We have, by police, we have 15 million arrests a year, mostly for victimless crimes. Most of the crime and murders on the streets are caused by this drug prohibition. So obviously, that's the first thing. We need to repurpose the police to protecting us instead of attacking us to try to change our morals, which isn't working at all. By the way, we interdict about under 1% of all the illegal drugs in the nation per year. And by the way, the number one uh, killer of, number one dangerous drug uh, killing drug is sugar. It's addictive, it's recreational. Number two is, you know, cigarettes. Number three is alcohol. I mean, these are simple things. As far as, you know, preventing drugged or um, uh, drunk driving, yes, we need to put breathalyzers in every car. That's just how it is. Um, Anyway, let's get to the main point of this. Number one, repurpose the police towards protecting us, not arresting us for bullshit. Number two, bringing all the troops home to protect us. To protect us here, now, here, now. Uh, That means we'll have about a million police and a million troops. We have a nation of 320 million people. So that's not probably gonna cut it. We could have, you know, an extra million Police, or sorry, I thought I hit, I thought I turned it off. We could have an extra million police or um, military or both. I mean, and you know, I think only a small percentage of these people should be marked as police. You know, they should be undercover or undercover, you know, military. I mean, that's, you know, you don't want to make them targets, but you want it to be known. I mean, we should have, you know, every time a movie ever is shown, we should have a police or uh, military person there. I mean, every public gathering of over like 100 people or even, you know, uh, you know, 100 people say would be a good number. I mean, it would be ideal to have police there. Every, you know, church meeting, every synagogue meeting, even every, um, you know, of course, of every religion, you know, you should have um, armed people there working for the government to protect us. Now, finally, let's be honest about this. The, only, the best way is to get armed. I'm sorry to say this, that's how it is. Now, as far as uh, tapping phones and watching computers, that's probably not gonna work. Number one, they know that you're tapping phones. If you're tapping phones, the terrorists know that, so they won't use phones. If they know that you're, that you're watching computers, they're not gonna use the computers. Now, will they still use these 
uh, online chat groups to try to recruit people? Sure. But let me say this. The number one recruiter is not these idiot chat groups. It's that we have wars going on overseas still. We are fighting overseas still. We have 10,000 troops still in Afghanistan, 5,000 in Iraq. If Trump were elected, he said he would bomb the shit out of them and, you know, send over 30,000 more troops. And uh, Hillary's just talking about bombing the shit out of them, although she doesn't like to curse. My point is, as I said, John, James Comey said, number one, you know, obviously there would be this squeeze of radicalized people out of there, but that's not the point. The point is, we, the main danger is radicalizing people overseas, here and everywhere else in the world. How do you do that? You stop the war. Now, Hillary says, oh, we'll only go after the bad guys. Well, um, I'm sure we've been trying to do that so far, and so far we have killed in Iraq about a million people, and you know, in, Af in Afghanistan we don't know how many hundred thousands, maybe more than a million, maybe two million in Iraq. I mean, or if not killed, then led to the deaths of, you know, because then started a civil war by accident. I told them, I, I am the only candidate running who said, do not go into Afghanistan after 9-11. Certainly you don't go into Iraq, I was saying, but after 9-11, I was saying, no, you don't go in there. You're mostly going to probably kill innocent people. Therefore, you're going to turn a whole country that isn't against you against you. You're going to turn a whole religion that isn't against you against you. You're going to turn this into, you know, whether you like it or not, it's going to seem to many Muslims that it's Christian versus Muslims. Now, Hillary is going to say, oh, we don't like it, but we have 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people out there we have to kill. No, no, you don't have to kill them. You have to show them, look, we are about peace and love, and the people you're learning from are about hate. And, you know, we don't have to worry about uh, which culture is going to catch on more in the world. Modernity has caught on in the world. MTV, McDonald's, has caught on in the world. Although they should be going organic and, you know, paleo, whatever. But my point is... <laughs> Caveman diet, back to, back to the future. Anyway, my point is, is, um, what is my point? Uh, we have won this culture battle already. Now, as far as recruitment, yes, we should monitor chat rooms to see if people are getting radicalized. And then, well, I guess that if somebody, if we realize that somebody is being turned onto the concept of attacking us, they should then be tapped and followed. That would be probable cause to get a warrant. However, I am against this concept, which they have been using, which I consider entrapment, because it is entrapment, which is they meet people online, and half the time these people are just lonely or, you know, mentally ill, and then they say, oh, well, boy, these Americans suck. Wouldn't you like to attack them? And the guy says, yes, half the time wanting to just impress the person they're with, whether it's their only friend they've ever had or it's a hot agent. Anyway, my point is, um, then they say, oh, well, I have a weapon. Would you want me to give you this weapon? They say, yes, and then boom, you're arrested. That is not getting somebody who would have been radicalized. That is getting somebody who you can trick into radicalizing. That's a difference. There's a difference. <laughs> a big difference. The difference is whether they were about to commit an attack or not, or whether they could be convinced to commit an attack. That is the difference between innocence and guilt. So when they say, oh, well, we've used the Internet to stop 20 people, they said that in New York recently, who would have done plots. No, no. When you dig deep, the FBI will tell you, oh, yes, well, everyone we arrest, uh, we, we, we think that they might be radicalized, and then we radicalize them. That's not the same thing. Now, you need a warrant. Get a warrant. It's in the Constitution. You want to follow somebody, you get a warrant. As far as arresting people. Yes, arrest people if they are guilty. If it is beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the concept of guilt in a courtroom. And then charge them. And then take them to court. And then only keep them in jail for life if they have been found guilty by a jury of their peers. That's what our nation is about. Innocence until proven guilty. We have dozens of people still in Guantanamo Bay. Innocent. Why do I say they're innocent? They've had 15 years to build a case. And within day one after 9-11, and this isn't right, but between day one after day one after 9-11, they started to tape record these people's conversations with their lawyers. 
Isn't that illegal? You say, well, yes, it was. They broke the law. Well, isn't torture illegal? Yeah, yes, it was. Still is. <coughs> they broke all the laws. They didn't get one shred of, not one shred of information from torture. Trump is wrong. That doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. Somebody's being tortured. They say whatever the hell they think it is you want to hear. That's common sense. This is common sense, people. Number one, bring the troops home. Stop the fighting overseas. Number two, repurpose the police to protecting us. Number three, arm all the citizens. And number four, or number one, however you want to put it, spread the wealth. Make the world wealthy. Make everybody in our nation wealthy. Or at least surviving and having no trouble surviving. That would be fine. That would be fine. That would be great. Food for everyone. Jobs for everyone. Housing for everyone. That doesn't mean a bunk bed. Now, as far as taxes, you haven't heard my tax plan, plan probably. It's simple. Nobody pays taxes unless they can already afford to have a family. Why? Because we don't want a few people being rich preventing the rest of the world from having children. That's crazy. <sighs> okay. All right. I've done enough screaming. I love you all. Please vote for Fred. Fred Schultz, JD. I'm a lawyer. Fred Schultz, S-C-H-U-L-T-Z. Fred, can write me in. Please tell the pollsters you support Fred Schultz. And we will free all the innocent people in jail who are slaves in jail. That's 2 million people at this moment. 15 million people wrongfully arrested every year. Well, maybe 14. Maybe a million were correctly arrested. But even of them, we have longer jail sentences than we need. And many of those who are arrested for real crimes are the wrong person because witness ID is the least accurate form of identification. We need to start going towards DNA. And that means everybody gets their DNA tested for every case. Anyway, okay, there's many other good things. When I tax the wealthy and then spend all the rest of the money on 50 million jobs for people and free housing, free education, that means college, that means public and private, that means even grad school so we can have lawyers and doctors helping the poor who need it more than anyone else. Anyway, okay, I love you all. I know you all work hard every day. I'm sending you all my love. Please spread this video. Let's make it viral so we can all win already and uh, save the world. Save the people of the world. Save the, a the plants. Save the animals. And stop all this terrorism. It's horrible. Okay, love you all. Thank you. Protect yourself. Love you. Be safe. Love you. Love party. We're trying to start a third party, the love party. We're going to be the party of love, not hate. We're about love, not hate. That's what the USA and the world has to be about. Love, not hate. Okay, love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Bye.